If we turn our attention to the sideboard here, turn our attention to the sideboard here, we look up at Alpha 1, 11 11, Veterans Day. It's also my sister's birthday, fun fact. She is. 28 today. Oh, I was going to guess 27. SWBA students will be able to use slope and y intercept to graph linear equations. Section 4 4 and section 4 6. Section 4 4 is like stupid short and fast. And so we're combining with section 4 6 today. Mr. Cos will have in section 4 5. Section 4 5 is actually going to come next unit. This chapter 4 got split up into two units unit 4A, unit 4B. We're doing unit 4A right now. So we're doing a bunch of stuff with linear equations and graphing it and how to graph. And then in 4B, our next unit afterwards, we'll talk about the equations of it a little bit more, go into more in depth on that. It just kind of got separated out. Is that your question, Kelly? Oh, ooh, I already answered it. Okay. So we're going to talk about this idea of slope today. This idea of slope today. Okay. So slope, you think about slope, you might think about um, slopes like hills, right? You might hear like the slopes, hit the slopes like skiing or snowboarding, okay? Um, very timely with snow outside today, so that's a fun one. Um, but slope in math, we call it the steepness of a line. It's the steepness of a line. Now, slope, we say it's the rise over run. It's a fraction, okay? We say it's the rise over the run. I'm going to write that in. It's the rise of the run. So if we look at, um, I'm going to just plot a graph here, guys. Okay, I'm just going to plot a graph, okay? One point is going at, uh, let's go, uh, one comma one. Okay? One point I'm going to put up one comma one. Okay? And then I'm going to put my next point at three comma five. Okay? I'm going to put one point at one comma one. One point at three comma five. I just pick those randomly, um, and let's say I'm just going to connect those points real quick, okay? Let's say these are two points of an equation. I just came up with this random equation, these random points, these are two points of the equation. Yes, Penny? You have to say comma. Um, no, oh, okay. I just do that to make it a little clearer for you guys. Okay. So you could just say one, one, three, five. I didn't swap the five and three, didn't I? It's a great catch. So I should. What was that? It's getting three, yeah. It's, it is five comma three, not three comma five. Thank uh -huh. you. All right. So if we look at the rise or run of this, we go from the first point to the second point. So how much do we rise or go up? We go up how many? Five. How many? We go up. Four, two. We go up one, two up. So our rise ends up being two. How far do we run to the right? Do you run up and down? No, you run left and right. Okay? Yeah. Like you run straight, like horizontally. I shouldn't say you have to run left and right. You run horizontally, okay? Like you run on a horizontal surface. So how far are we running to the right? Four, four okay? So we are going two up, we're going two up, rising two, we're positive two up, we're going positive four to the right. So our rise over run, our slope is two over four. Now we look at two over four, what do we say we can do with that? Simplify to what? We can simplify to what? One half. One half. So we say our slope is actually one over two. We want to simplify that. We want to say, yeah, it's one over two. So what we're saying is, is for this graph, for every one we go up, we're going over two. For every one that we go up, they're going to the right two. So there's another point here. If I go one up from this point, I go two over, there's a point here. Here, one up, two over, there's a point there. The slope is constant the whole time. It's not like you're seeing a graph go up here, 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 and then all of a sudden it goes up like that. We're not seeing that. Oh, we're seeing it go up constantly the whole time, okay? But something we need to know about slope is we have an, uh, a variable we use for it, okay? And it's not going to be a variable you think. It's not S. Okay, it's not S. We use S for side length. We use S for side length of like squares and stuff in like geometry. And so instead, we actually use M. We use M for slope. 
And I don't actually know the entire reason why we chose Em. Um, she's a thug. Just a thug. Don't forget, you also have to go back down the next day. <laughs> I will talk about that, yeah, thank you.
And we're probably not going to pick a boy like this. Why aren't we going to pick a boy like this? It's really hard to read, right? We don't know exactly where that is. But we know exactly where this one is. And we know exactly where this one is. Okay? So we skip from here to here or the way around. We really don't care. What is our rise? Our rise is 3. And what's our run? Run. So our slope is 3 over 1, which we can just call 3 if you would rather. You can just call it 3 if you would rather. If you look at that, that is a positive slope, but it goes uphill. Okay? I want you guys to try the second one here. You guys try the second one here, okay? Actually, let's just skip it in the tent. We need to rest it. Just stare blankly at the whiteboard. Actually, blank may be your fault. Um, uh, <laughs> stare blankly at the whiteboard. Yeah. It has all these sevens and sixes. Wow. You're done with the second one. Just stare blankly at the whiteboard. I do need to go over the schedule. Sorry, guys, I'm going to interrupt you over the schedule. Thank you for reminding me. And we have our assembly after this class. We will go. We will sit as a class. Okay, we will go and we will sit as a class. Or it's those of us that will still remain in the class after everyone leaves. Um, and then from there, you go to fourth hour slash lunch. Lunch is based upon your fourth hour at the teacher's academy, okay? So, for example, if a fourth hour, a student in my fourth hour, what lunch would they have? Steam lunch, our third lunch. Okay, so they go to class. From the 10 25 to noon, and then they go to lunch. Okay? So, Kelly. Mm -hmm. So, I go to lunch and then they have their class lunch. Exactly right. So, an 18 teacher, if you have an 18 teacher, the fourth hour, okay, you would go straight from the assembly to lunch and then to your class, okay? Um, Age, you go to your class. Steve, you go to your class, okay? Uh, Reese. I'm trying to remember what you're saying. I'm doing something wrong. What? So, um, it's kind of off and kind of not. We have regular school after the students and stuff. That's bad. Oh, don't we go to class first? Yeah, because it's 935. 35. Oh, I guess you're right. Until you're good. Yeah, so I guess we're going to class no matter what. Ha ha ha. Thank you for saying that. I needed to read that better. Okay, that is bad 2020, right? No, he's not 35. Um, uh, I'll just pretend it's 35, though. I'll falsify some records. It'll be good. Okay. Uh, that would be fraud in educator records. Yeah, but oh, if he's present, he can pardon. So, I'm just saying. Oh, um, pardon. Hey, great. Okay. How old are you? And then we go from 6th hour to 8th hour from there. Heads up, guys. Heads up, guys. If you are in Coach Wiseman or Coach Tilson's PE classes, 4th hour. If you are in Coach Wiseman's or Coach Tilson's PE classes, you are eating steam or lunch, okay? Everyone else okay. should be normal with their academy teacher, okay? Okay, um, so for our slope here, raise your hand if you want to tell me what our slope ended up being here, Kelly. Negative one over eight four. I would agree it's negative one over eight four, but I don't think, I think even one of them is negative but not really, okay? So think about it this way. They're rising from here to here, negative one, they're actually falling, but we are still running a positive four, okay? But if you think about it the other way around, okay, we have people rising one and fall and running a negative four. So either way, whether this is negative one over four or uh, one over negative four, it really doesn't matter. There right. has to be only one negative sign. Now we talked about that before, how the negative sign, we don't care if it's on the top or the bottom or on the front of a fraction even. Yeah, you just have to have one of them, okay? If you have two negatives, then it's really just a positive. Okay, look at this. You say, oh, this fraction should be negative because this is going downhill. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, any questions on that one besides what's been asked? Okay, let's look at this third one here. Um, what's happening here? Are we running at all? No, no but are we rising from this yeah. point to this point? Yeah. We're, ri we're rising three, but our run is zero. I'm so this is three over zero, and can we divide by zero? No. No. So that's how we get that our slope is undefined. Or I'll just put U and D there, okay? For undefined. Our slope is undefined because we're dividing by zero. We can't divide by zero, it breaks math, so we don't do it. It breaks math, we don't do it, we don't like that. But what okay. if we want to break math? Um, I want you guys to try this fourth one here. I want you guys to try that fourth one here, please. Okay. You're done. Then you're done. Uh, I want you to do this. I want you to turn sideways in your head. I need a hair stretch. Try that for tension up here. So our, in this one, we do the rise over the line. What is our rise here? Zero. Zero without coming up and down. What's our run? Three. Two. Two. What is zero divided by literally anything? Zero. So our slope, our m, is zero. Okay. Okay. Um, on, go ahead. Yeah, you just be careful because we know that zero divided by anything is zero. But uh, if we divide by zero, we break math. So we just have to keep in mind what's happening in the graph. So if we remember that slope is rise over run, we're saying, well, this is rising a lot, but it's not running at all. So we're, just, we're dividing by zero. Um, very frustrating. So you got to be careful and try to keep those straight. You have to go big brain mode. You have to analyze and see what's happening. Okay? Um, I'm actually, we're going to look at this third one, this fifth one, and then we're going to skip this last one, actually. What's our rise here? Go on, one, two, three, how many? Four. And what's our run? Four. Four. So our slope is four over four, but does that reduce? Yes. To what? One, one over one. One over one. Call well, ourselves one over one, or we can even just call it one. Okay? Okay, we're going to skip that bottom line example. We're going to put the page in a 4.6. We're going to put the page in a 4.6 here, okay? Seth, please be patient for another minute, buddy. Thank you. Okay, so please don't spell like us. Thank you. Now we're going to talk about this. Oh, wait. Is this? Yes. Oh, I'm, I need to go back a page. There we go. Okay, we got, we're going to talk about this idea of slope intercept form. We're talking about this idea of slope intercept form. We just know what slope is, okay? We're going to learn what a y intercept is, okay? And we're going to learn about slope intercept form. So, slope intercept form, actually, for y intercept, let me go back a page. Y intercept is where it intersects the y axis, okay? Intercept is where it intersects the y axis, okay? So, here on this graph, um, two bad examples. On this graph here, it intercepts the y-axis when y is, or excuse me, um, when, when y is 3. So it intercepts the y-axis at 0, 3. So the y-intercept is 0, 3. Then you can make up in fancy and Then you can make This y-intercept, where is it crossing the y-axis on this graph? At zero, negative one. So here our y-intercept is zero, comma, negative one. What would our y-intercept be on this uh, last one that we did go over? Zero, comma, two would be our y-intercept. It's where it's crossing that y-axis, okay? So y-intercept is where it intersects the y-axis. Do we, what do we notice about the x-value each and every time we have the y-intercepts? 
zero. Does that make sense? Could the x value be like one if we're crossing the y-axis? Could the x value be five if we're crossing the y-axis? No, it can't be that far out here. If it's crossing the y-axis, it has to be at zero. That's where the y-axis is, the one x is zero. So now we're going to go to 4.6. We're going to talk about the idea of slope intercept form. So we have an equation in the form y is equal to mx plus b. Holy cow, that's a lot of, that's a lot of letters. Okay? We know y and we know x. What are y and x? The points, right? x comma y. M, we just learned m is what? Slope. Slope. Okay? So that leaves b as the odd man out. What do you think b might be? Not, not quite. What do we do? What's this called? Slope intercept form. So this is actually going to be our y intercept. It's whatever the y value is in the y intercept. Okay? It's kind of weird as b. Okay, we can't call it y though because y is already in the equation. So we'll call it b now. Okay? You guys will use y equals mx plus b in every single math class from here on out. So you got to take in high school. Guarantee it. And unless you guys are going to go be math teachers or a math major or an engineer here, you're probably going to use y equals mx plus b in some form in every math class for the rest of your life. It's a very, very big concept that we just went over. So we need to know the slope is m, the b is the y intercept, and our x and y are the same x and y we were used to. So we're going to go through some examples of writing equations of lines given the y intercept and the slope. So all we're going to do is we're going to take this form, y equals mx plus b. y and x are going to stay the same. But what are we going to do with the m and the b? Plug them in. Plug them in. So y equals 3x plus 5. That's it. That's the equation of the line. That's our function. So just like that, we can now graph that. We've learned how to graph that with the table. We can graph it now. Questions on how we got that equation? We just said what our slope was, what our y intercept was. Boom. We have an equation. Can anybody help with the number two? Ben? Y equals negative one x plus three. Yeah. Y equals negative one fx plus three. Okay, on number three, what's going to be different here? It's going to be 5x plus what? Do I really have to like write that? Oh, I guess right, y equals 5x. And on four, our slope is zero. y equals zero x minus two. Notice what the negative here is, we can write minus two. You can write plus and negative if you want, that's the same thing. What's zero times literally any? Zero. So y is equal to negative two. Questions on how we wrote those equations? Okay. So now if we look right below this, say okay, well if we're given the equation, let's identify the slope and the y-intercept. So here, these are in the same format. They're in this y equals mx plus b format. So in this first equation, what's our slope? What's our m? Four. What's our b? Nine. Boom. We found the slope. We found the intercept. We found our m or b. The second one, what do we notice about numbers two, three, and four? Are they in the same form? Is the y by itself? No, so what do we think we might have to do? Get y by itself. Do we not solve for y? Yeah, we do. So in number two, what would be our first step in solving for y? Because we want to get y by itself, so it's in this form. Because if we look right now, we might say, oh, well, four is with x, and eight is by itself, so our slope might be four, and our intercept might be eight. We're going to see in a moment why that's not true. So if we, how, do get, how do we get y by itself here? Subtract by 4x first. 
subtract. Now, do we know what 8 minus 4x is? Oh, we did it all in terms. So you just put negative 4x plus 8. So I'm going to put the x first because that's how it is in our slope intercept approach. So I'm going to put our x first because that's how it is in our slope intercept approach. So I want us to get in the habit. It's very important that we do that. We'll find out here in a moment. Does this y fully by itself yet? No, we have to divide by 4. We have to divide this whole side by 4. Now, this 4 goes into both these, doesn't it? So we have to divide each of them. So what's negative 4 divided by 4? Negative 1 or negative x. And what's 8 divided by 4? 2. So now we have y is equal to negative x plus 2. That is a big R equation in the slope intercept form. So what does our um, our m end up being? Negative 1. And what's our b end up being? 2. See how that's very different than what we had originally? So we have to solve for y first, and then we can get into that. Then we can say, oh, well, this is what it's going to be. Number three together. We're going to have to go over the same process of getting y by itself. It's going to be our first step. We're going to subtract 2x, okay? 4y is equal to what? Can somebody tell me how I want to write this right side right now? Very good. Very good. I'm going to put negative 2x plus 7. We're going to put the x first because we're very careful to put the negative. And seven to the positive. Okay, now to get y by itself, we have to divide by four. Now here's the thing: is four going to each of these this time? No. What we've learned before in earlier math that we can split our fraction, right? We can split our fraction. They give two x over four plus seven over four. We've learned we can do that, right? We looked a little bit, and now. Can we simplify the left fraction? Yeah, it becomes negative 1 over 2. X. Or I can put the X on the top too, that's the same thing. If the X is on the top or off to the side, it's the same thing because it's just being multiplied with it. You multiply it on the top. And 7 over 4 doesn't reduce, so it just stays 7 over 4. So in this case, in number 3, what's our slope? Negative one half. So we don't have to do the x, but we look for the x to know where it's at. And Justin, what's the y-intercept? What's our b? Back to your right at seven over four. Okay. Questions on that? We're going to skip that last example right now. We're going to go on right below this. And we're going to learn how to graph slope intercept form. So before we learn how to graph using a table, right? We did that in our warm up. Okay? Surprise! There's an easier way to do it. There's an easier way to do that. Okay? We're going to learn this easier way right now. It's still very important to have that tool because we'll continue to use that in later math. Okay? We'll continue to use that in this class. We'll continue to use that in further math classes. It's a very important tool to know how to make tables and plot equations from there, plot our plot graphs from there. But there's an easier way to graph these equations using slope intercept form. So we have three steps we want to follow. The first one is we have to plot the y intercept. Then we're going to use the slope to move at least two points in two, uh, I'm actually going to change that to uh, at least point, one more point, both directions, and then we're going to connect the points with a straight line. And I guess if we change that to one more point, I should change that to one more point instead of one more point. Okay. So we're going to we're going to first graph this using our table again, okay? 
If I make a table, a number one, and we have the equation y equals 4x plus 1. y equals 4x plus 1. Well, we don't have a good reason to not make our normal weights. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Let me pick those. All the way to our plug to get in here. Negative 2 ends up being a negative 7. This ends up being a negative 3. 1, 5, and 9. If I go over and I graph these, Is a straight line stats good? Probably straighter than mine when you look up here. So you have that graph. Um, I'll put you on sleep. Okay. Now we're going to practice graphing it using this little third step folder. Okay. So we have y equals 4x plus 1. What's our n? What's our symbol? 1. 4. What's our p? What's our y-intercept? 1. So it says our first step is to do what? Elliot, what's it say? Plot the y-intercept. Plot the y-intercept. Y yeah, that's our first step. So we're going to plot the y-intercept. 1. Where am I going to put that? What's my coordinate for one? This y intercept. Zero to one. Very good. It's one up on the y axis. Okay. Now we're told our slope is four. Well, slope's a bit of fraction for us. So what is four secretly over? Four over one. Four over one. So what direction am I going four? Up. Oh, what direction am I going one? To the right. So I go from this point, if I count four up, one, two, three, four, and one to the right, I can make a point there. Can I do that again? Yeah. One, two, three, four, and I go one to the right. Now, if I go back to our original point, can I go in the other direction as well? What direction would I have to go four? Down. And what direction would I have to go one? Left. I do the opposite of both. So either it's four over one or it's negative four over negative one. So I have negative four down and negative one up. And I can do that again from here. One, two, three, four, and one to the left. Hey, did we notice we have the same five points? Did we end up getting the same points here? We did. If we connect this slide, we should notice that if we did it correctly, our graphs are the same, aren't they? Could we see this being a lot faster than the slope intercept 4? Yeah, I can see that being a lot faster. Okay? Especially if it's already solved for y, I can see this being a ton faster. So instead of plugging in and doing all this math all the time, you say, oh, Starting point, then you count. Starting point, you count. Questions on that? So finally, in math, instead of it going easy and start and then getting harder today, it went harder before. Now we learned an easier way to do it. Let's flip the page. We'll practice a couple examples. So 
We're going to graph one half, y equals one half x minus pi using slope and y-intercept, using our slope-intercept approach. So you first have to identify what's our slope and what's our intercept. Or what's our slope? One half. Okay. Do I need what's our y-intercept? Negative five. Or what's our first step here? Kelly? On our y-intercept, we go down five on the y-axis with negative five. Now we need more than one point to have the graph. So how do we find our next point? Should we rise over one? So how much are we rising? One. How much are we running? Two. We go one right, or one up, so we and two right. Now one thing I want us to do, guys, is I said at least one point each direction. So we want one point this way. I want to go back to our original point. I want to go one point the other way. So where would I go from here, our original point again? Down one and up two. Now the reason I do that, I want us to do one in each direction. Because now if we connect, we notice a straight line. Now we do. And the straight line has to agree with all three points. What would happen if the straight line did not go through all three of your points? You did something wrong. Okay? That's why we do three points on these. That's why we do three points on these. Because it lets us know if we did something wrong or not. It lets us know if we did something wrong. If we only do two points, it's very risky. We don't know if we did something wrong. If we did it wrong, you'll never know. It's going to hit those two points. When you have three points, that's when you know. Questions on that one? Okay, we'll look at number three here. Graph y equals negative two x plus one. So what's our first step we have to identify, right? Okay, Ben, what's our slope? Oh. We got to go as a negative two over what, guys? One. And what's our y intercept, uh, Reese? One. Okay. Lucas, what's our first step here? Y. Graph Y intercept first. We have to have our starting point. If we don't have a starting point, we don't know where to count from. Of our starting point, we to count from. So now, our slope is negative 2 over 1. What direction are we going to? Down. Our run is positive 1. So, what direction are we going 1? To the right. So, if I go the other direction, if I come from a starting point, go the other direction, what way am I going to now? Up. What direction are we going 1 now? If I connect these, it goes through all three of them, which is good. A straight line goes through all three, which is good. That means we can do the work. That already made the same mistake twice, but hopefully we did something right. So on this one where we went from up and left, you really end up having two over negative one, right? And then going up two and negative one left. And we're okay with that because that's really the same fraction. No matter where the negatives and negatives on the top or the bottom, this is where we're really staying at. That. Questions on that one? Okay, let's go. We're going to do um, one of the two more examples, and we'll call it good, actually. And we're going to end our homework. Okay? Um, so, we're going to learn how to graph the slope intercept form, but this is going to be when y is not alone, when y is not by itself. Okay, so we have one extra step, but we've actually done this step before. Let's just say our first step is solve y, get y alone. And then if we look at the next three steps, what do we notice in the next three steps? That's what we just did. So the big thing is, guys, is like we saw earlier, we have to get y by itself to know what our slope and intercept is. Just like we saw on the previous page, okay? Like we saw back uh, a few slides ago, right here. You gotta get y by itself in order to know what your true slope was. Okay? So just like we saw on the previous page a few slides ago, we had to get y by itself to know what our slope and y intercept is. R, excuse me, what our slope and y intercept are. So 
So here, going to do the same thing. So our first step with 4y plus 8x equals 8 is to do what? Subtract 8x. Four y is equal to negative eight x plus eight. We go with that negative eight x first, and now what do we do? Divide by covariate the entire side. You know, just divide part of it, and y is equal to what? Very good. Negative two x plus two. And Lucas did a very good job making sure to divide both the negative eight x and the eight x. Okay, and if we can't divide one of them by four, then we split the fraction. If we can't divide one of them by four, we split the fraction. We have to split the fraction. So now, do we know what our slope is? Negative two. And what's our y-intercept? Two. So now, can we graph this? Yeah. So I want you guys to graph this one. Number one, I want you guys to graph it. And then when you're done, I want you to raise your hand. I lied about going to do only a couple more examples. I forgot we have to go through example three and four. Most of them are the first ones. Very good, you want to check? Very good. Very good, you want to check? Very good. Oh no, we check Kelly. Go. Yeah. I guess we can. Very good. Function the plan. What was that? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Hopefully, no students in this page. So I have to tell them not to. Okay. So. I think we did a good job on this one, guys. I think we did a good job on this one for what I saw. We want to check what we saw. Okay. I'll jump down. Okay. So up here, we go down to the right one, or up to the left one. We connect this point. Now we connect this point. No arrows. Okay. So we do the same scale number two. Yeah, my guy has to use that right now. Okay, let's get number two for the moment. Let's look at number three and four, though. These are unique situations. Three, y is equal to five. Do we see an x there? No. So do we know what our slope is? Well, let's think about it this way. If we don't see an x, does that mean zero multiply with your x? Because what's zero times anything? No. So would we write that there then? No. no. So if we don't see an, an x there, if it's just y equals 5, secretly y equals 0 x plus 5. So what's secretly our slope? Zero. And what's our y-intercept? 5. So we go up, we still plot our y-intercept. And a slope of 0, does that mean we rise at all? No. So it's a horizontal line. It's a horizontal line. So we can still have our wider step if it's five. There's really a zero x. Now here's another way we can think about this, guys. Big brain time, okay? It says y equals five. Is y5 right here? Yeah. Is y5 still over here? Yeah, is the value of 5 over here? Y5 over here? Is the value of y5 over here? Is the value of what? So the value of y is what everywhere along this line? 5. It's never not 5. Now, so when you see y equals 5, you say, okay, these are going to be every single point where y is 5. Is y5 like over here? No, so it's not part of the graph. It's every single place where y is 5. So 
Suppose like a number four kind of in that same light. X equals negative one. We don't see a Y there, do we? Okay. We don't see a Y there. Let's think about this way. X is equal to negative one. So if this was all the points where Y equals five, it's going to be all the points where what? Where X is all negative one. So is X negative one right here? Is it negative one up here? Is it negative one up here? Is it negative one down here? Negative one down here. So what kind of line do we have? A vertical line. And this is our undefined slope. This is our undefined slope. Okay. So for me, and maybe this will be the case for you or not, but for me, the easiest way for me to think of these two and keep them straight, which one's horizontal and which one's vertical, is kind of backwards. Y ends up being horizontal, the X ends up being vertical, okay? Is they, well, these are all the points where X is negative 1. And these are all the points where Y equals 5. It's always true. X is always negative 1 right here. It never changed. So we can't move left to right. Okay? We have questions over those? Okay. Kelly? Yeah, what's our slope? Yeah, what's our slope for number 4, okay? So we just take any two points, it really doesn't matter. I can take this point and this point right here for all I care. What are we rising from here to here? One, we're rising one. What are we running? Literally nothing, zero. So one divided by zero. What is anything divided by zero? Undefined, because that breaks math. You cannot split things into zero groups. You cannot split things into zero. That's what dividing by something means, you put it in that many groups. Can't physically split something into zero groups. It's not possible. You always have at least one group. Right now, I can split you guys into two groups, three groups, four groups. Right now, you guys are in one group. You're all together in a class. I can't split you guys into zero groups. That's not possible. Does that make sense? It's a great question. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to pass it over here. Hey guys, and something just to keep on your radar, okay, um, is we're going to be finishing up this unit. We're going to be finishing up this unit this week as far as lessons go, okay. Um, so we're looking at testing next Thursday. Now, is that really, really close? No, but it's somewhat near, okay. It's not really, really close, like impending, like you need to focus so hard on this right now because we're testing tomorrow. No, but it's just coming up. I just want to let you guys know. Have a heads up. You meant to be aware that we are going to be testing um, next Thursday, the 21st. Okay? We're going to be looking at testing next Thursday, the 21st. Okay? Okay. Um, there are no don't do's on this, but just follow the um, flow directions. On the first two, you're just finding the slope. On the following uh, 10th, you're asking the equations. 